This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to answer the question, has Bitcoin's boat already sailed? And in the process, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin's global adoption and Bitcoin's S-curve. This is a question that I get a lot, so I wanted to make a video that I could just permanently refer to. Here's an example of the kind of question I get. Bitcoin, or question or comment, Bitcoin is at the top of its S-curve. Yeah, your gains may be a little bit better than ETFs like SPY or QQQ. Uh, Bitcoin boat has already sailed. This seems to have originated with Richard Hart of Hex Scammer fame. If you do a search, you usually find out that this critique of Bitcoin being at the top of its S-curve really comes from him. At least that's where I believe most of it comes from. For those of you who don't know about Richard Hart, he's not exactly a serious character. I will link to the, just the uh, video below where he's basically twerking. You can see his token, which was basically a pump and dump, has gone from about 50 cents last year down to less than two cents. And a lot of people have gotten really hurt by this. I made a video about this last year, warning people about it. And now it looks like the US SEC is going after Richard Hart and Hex. They've been investigating uh, influencers who've been promoting Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X. So hopefully someone takes care of Richard Hart pretty soon and he ends up behind bars as he should for this scam. But I only mention this because uh, you should know who is promulgating this and you should know his background. Richard Hart is actually a very smart guy, a very good debater, but I believe he's an unscrupulous character. And I think this is where this S-curve critique is coming from. For those of you not familiar with the S-curve, it's basically a way of plotting global adoption. And so the curve looks somewhat like an S. It starts off flat, it's got a steeper part, and then it ends flat. At the beginning, it's flat because you're at zero market penetration. At the top, it's flat because you're at 100% market penetration. And you have these various, these various periods. If we look back over the, the 20th century, we can see that a lot of new technologies followed the S-curve. We have the telephone, the automobile, electricity, refrigerator. These are roughly S-curves. You can see the color TV here as a nice, uh, nice S-curve. And it reaches the point where, for example, at least in developed countries, most people have a stove, most people have a refrigerator, most people have a color TV, have a phone, etc. So this is an example of how new technologies spread. And I believe Bitcoin is following a similar path. So then the question is, do you agree with Richard Hart that we're at the top of the S-curve, that we're basically at 100% adoption, and this is always his critique. And part of this critique was you should, uh, instead of buying Bitcoin, you should buy something that's at the bottom of its S-curve rather than the top of its S-curve. So again, this is a very disingenuous critique and it's meant to, to sell his own token. But let's just take a look and see whether this critique is right. If, if Bitcoin is at the top of the S-curve, that means, means it's reached full adoption and the Bitcoin boat has sailed and you shouldn't expect that much price appreciation from it in terms of fiat. So is Bitcoin really at the top of its S-curve? We will know it's at the top of its S-curve when it achieves virtually global adoption and distribution. If Bitcoin is really at the top of its S-curve, then you can be sure that everyone you know owns Bitcoin and understands Bitcoin and likes Bitcoin. That'd be approximately seven or eight billion people. No one thinks Bitcoin's a scam if we're at the top of the S-curve. And no one is criticizing Bitcoin for its energy usage, of course, since everyone owns some and you don't generally badmouth an investment that you are, you own. Now, if your holiday experience the last couple of weeks with friends and family and extended family was like mine, you will realize that we're nowhere close to full Bitcoin adoption, even in the US, even among a fairly educated and wealthy population because the US is very wealthy globally. Over, over the holidays, I found friends and extended family kept telling me that FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried and Bitcoin were basically the same thing. They really conflated it in their minds and the news and that the scam was finally over. Bitcoin was finished because SBF and FTX blew up. And so this is really how early we are. This is a lot like 1993 for the internet, which was the year before Netscape came out, which really made the internet accessible for the general population. And even what after Netscape came out, most people weren't online until the late 90s. So I think we're very, very early. Blockware Solutions came out with an interesting 
piece last year in which they tried to look at blockchain data, Bitcoin blockchain data, and get an idea of how many unique entities or users were using the Bitcoin network, either as a medium of exchange or a store of value. And they came up with approximately 30 or 31 million unique entities, 30.8 million unique users. And if we divide that into the global population, we end up with an estimate of approximately 0.36% of the global population is currently using Bitcoin. Again, that's not 36%, that's a third roughly of one percentage point. And so if you plot out the S-curve as Blockware did, you can see where we are here. This was published in, I believe, the middle of 2022. Things probably haven't changed too much uh, since then in terms of uh, user adoption. If anything, it's maybe gone down a little bit with all the scare headlines, but this is where we are in the headline. We are way down here with just less than 1% of the global population using Bitcoins. And so when people like Richard Hart and other crypto scammers and promoters tell you that you're at the top of the S-curve, I would ask to see the data. If we're at the top of the S-curve, you'd expect maybe not 100% of the global population using Bitcoin, but when do you expect 60, 70, 80, 90%? And instead, we are way down here. So these are all lies. We are nowhere close to Bitcoin full adoption. And you know this because most of your friends and the people you know do not like Bitcoin. They hate Bitcoin. They don't own Bitcoin. They don't understand Bitcoin. They confuse FTX and Bitcoin. They confuse XRP or Hex and Bitcoin. We're still very, very early. And so knowing this, I have to ask you, are you still losing sleep over whether Bitcoin is going to hit 12K now? Does it go to 10K or 12K or does it go to 20K or 25K first? This really doesn't matter. When you're down here, there is only upside, assuming that Bitcoin is a good technology. And I've spent a lot of my time on this channel trying to demonstrate why it is such a superior technology because of the decentralization, because of the settlement guarantees, and because of the security. And so you need to keep this context, especially when you're getting worried, would you sell your internet stocks when we were at less than 1% adoption. This is really even before Amazon was founded, if you want to think in 1994 terms and, and compare it to the internet. So it doesn't matter where Bitcoin, whether Bitcoin's going to hit 10K or 12K first or go right back up to 30, 40K. And it doesn't really matter where Bitcoin trades over the next few months, especially if you're a long-term hodler as I am and you're planning to hold your Bitcoin without selling it for the rest of your life. When Amazon was down 95% in 2002, and it really did go down something like 90, 95% from the peak in March of 2000 down to the, the trough in October of 2002. And I remember this very well because I was active in the markets. When Amazon was down 95%, were you better off making predictions using a price chart? Or were you better off really reading Jeff Bezos's investor letters, his Amazon letters, and trying to understand his vision, trying to understand where he was taking it, and taking a, taking a very close look at what Amazon actually did and what their plans were. And if you just thought it was a bookstore that was going to sell physical books over the internet, you really didn't understand Bezos's vision or the upside. So I think a lot of people who are looking at charts now and they say the chart of Bitcoin looks really bad. It does indeed, but you have to understand the underlying technology and you have to understand that Amazon in 2002, in October of 2002, also looked really, really bad, but it didn't ultimately matter because Amazon's fundamentals were extremely strong. Global adoption of Amazon's products and its services was still very low and it had this huge runway as Bitcoin has as well. So what are the basic fundamentals of Bitcoin? Bitcoin is money that cannot be debased. Something like Ethereum can be debased by the founders. Something like Cardano or Hex or XRP can be debased by the founders. They do not have credible monetary policy. Bitcoin not only is money that cannot be debased, Bitcoin is money that cannot be censored when you use it in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. Bitcoin is the strongest money we've ever seen. It's the apex predator of money. And like Amazon in 2002, Bitcoin really has serious, uh, zero serious competitors at the moment. It has very low adoption here. We have this huge runway ahead of us and there's no serious competition. All the competition, the biggest competition like Ethereum, for example, has shot itself in the foot and move to proof of stake. So we're still so, so early. So the next time you hear someone say that Bitcoin is at the top 
of its S-curve, I want you to remember this link, which I'll link to in the description notes below, and you can point it out to people. Because this, this is just a bold-faced lie that's been repeated so many times by people like Richard Hart that people are actually beginning to believe it's true when it's absolutely not true. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.